Today I'm going to demo the new filter from IntelliGel called the Corgasmatron. Um, the original circuit design was from David Dixon. It's part of his 2164 series and it's been adapted for Eurorack and a bunch of extra features added to it. So basically it's two VCFs. Um, each VCF can be low pass, high pass or notch. And linking the two filters together is a crossfade module. And then there's also a switch for choosing series and parallel routing. All of the um, modulation controls and uh, IO are on the bottom. So whenever I get a new filter, the first thing that I want to do is put a raw waveform into it and just do a filter sweep. So we've got patched in here is a saw waveform from the micro LFO and we're in low pass mode and we're just listening to filter A on the left. So this is without any resonance. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same sweep, but add a little bit more Q. And then if I turn up the Q to the point that it's going to oscillate. So now it's gone from sounding very clean to starting to be much more um, aggressive and also musical. I really find the resonance on this to be um, very useful for sound design. And we have this extra control called Q Drive, which will set the max level and it basically gives you some sort of um, almost a uh, uh, saturation distortion. So. So here's with everything maxed. All right, so now let's try the low, the high pass. Turn down the uh, source uh, VCO. And add some more resonance. Okay, and then the final mode is the notch. It's a little bit more of a subtle effect. Turn up the VCO again. You can hear it sweeping the through the frequency range. Okay. Now, um, let's just turn this off for a second. And over here, you can see the series and parallel switches. So really, these only apply if you are using um, the crossfader or output B. And the reason for this is that the, um, in series mode, the output of filter A is normal to the input of filter B. In parallel mode, um, the input uh, A is routed to both filters and then you get separate outputs. So you could use them as two separate filters in this, this uh, configuration. So we're gonna switch to series mode and we're gonna take the output from B, which actually I can just get to with the crossfader. That tone you're hearing is because B is resonant, uh, oscillating right now. So we turn that down. And I'm going to put um, A on low pass and B on high pass. Because this is being routed through uh, filter B, I have to have attenuation up to allow some of the output signal and I'm going to turn our source up again. So now what we've done by having it series and having a low pass and a high pass is that we've combined them to create a band pass filter. So add a bit of resonance to each, turn down the drive. Okay, so 
in this bandpass mode, I have to control two frequency cutoffs. But on uh, the jacks, you can see that FM2, uh, the one for A, is normal to the input of FM2 for B. So I've got a uh, slow LFO from a Vulcan. I'm going to patch into FM2, and then I'm going to turn up the attenuator to allow a bit. Now we're going to get a bandpass sweep of both at the same time. Now, what's cool about these being normaled is that since they're um, bipolar, I can have them going in two different directions. So I'm going to put this one negative. So you're actually, the width of the bandpass filter is now changing. Now you can hear sort of uh, formant shapes. So once you start playing with these uh, uh, configurations, you can change the filter types that are feeding each other. So now I've got the second one is notch. And I'm going to add a bit more resonance. You could have two low pass in series to get a steeper curve. Let's go back to band pass. Okay, so now I'm going to show the crossfade. Um, again, we're just going to use the single saw wave uh, source right now, and I'm going to put it into parallel mode so it's going to both filter sides. And when I have nothing plugged into the X fade jack, and I have this switch in unipolar mode, um, I can do X crossfades manually. So I'll turn this up. So you can hear that when I go counterclockwise, I mean clockwise, I'm, I'm crossfading to the high pass filter output. And when I go counterclockwise, I'm crossfading to the low pass filter output. So you can sort of morph between the two filter shapes. And if I plug in that same LFO source into the X fade, um, you don't hear anything at first. And this is because once I have something patched in, this same knob acts as an input attenuator for the CV. So if I turn this up, now it's fading between the, the two sides. I have a switch for direction, so I can have this, instead of going from A to B, it's going to go from B to A. And right now, it's uh, actually a bipolar source because it's a um, LFO and I'm in unipolar mode, so I'm only getting half the modulation. So I'm going to switch this to bipolar. Now I get a, an even fade between the two sides. Because the resonance has got so much texture to it, um, you can really dial in some really interesting growls and tones to make drones. If I slow down the LFO and use the crossfade, I'm, all I'm using is a single VCO, a single LFO, and then this to create a, uh, a fairly complicated sound. And of course the crossfade can go uh, into audio rate. Alright, so that's the basics of crossfade. Let's take this out, put it back in unipolar mode. Now I can just be listening to the A side again. Um, I'm going to turn down the input so that we're hearing nothing. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can use this as a VCO. So I'm going to turn up Q. And 
Now the filter is oscillating. It actually will oscillate just past 12 o'clock. So it oscillates pretty easily. And uh, of course, once you've done that, the filter sweep becomes your, I mean, the frequency control becomes your fundamental frequency. So you're hearing a sine wave, but because of the drive controls, we can actually distort that to get a really nice tone for bass lines. All right, so um, again, another nice thing of the X fade is that I can have these two things, the two sides oscillating, and then I can blend between them and tune. The an interesting thing is the Q drive actually has a subtle effect on the tuning, so you can use it as a fine tune. So it's relatively close, but I'm going to tune an interval. All right, go back to A. And uh, I'm going to feed it a um, uh, CV source into the one volt per octave. So that's with the Q drive up. And when I turn this down, that's just the pure sine wave. So. Got a nice bass line going. And then if I go to the um, X fade so I can hear the other. So now they're in, uh, in harmony with each other. So obviously you can uh, FM these, so I've got a, another oscillator here, and I'm going to um, add some FM to both of them. So let's just hear one oscillator. I'm going to turn down the key drive again. Okay, so let's let's put these all together now. Um, I'm gonna take out the uh, FM, and I'm going to hear the two tones, and then I'm going to use the X fade to blend between those two notes while this is playing. I can uh, bring back in some of the original filter signal. So I'm going to take out the oscillation and just use that CV sequence to modulate the filter. And that's the Gasmatron, just a few of the things you could do with it. Once you start to play, you'll you'll realize that there's a lot of uh, sound design potential.